Good day fine people of the internet. Today I was hoping to fit my new glass to my Chevy Coupe. However, due to popular demand, it looks like I'm doing my passenger door. When I say I'm going to do something, I'll do it. You don't have to keep reminding me every six months, okay? Okay, if you missed the planning video for this, let me run through it very quickly, okay? This is the front of the door. This is where the hinges will attach, there and there. So behind this jam, that's my jam. Behind this jam, there will be a solid plate going from roughly there to roughly there. As you can see, there is a slight bend at this section, so it'll be straight up to there, then it'll bend a little bit. 316 steel should be plenty strong enough for that, okay? I'll be drilling holes in that plate that I make, about three or four holes there, three or four holes there in that plate, but I'm not going to attach it to the car, uh, to the door at this point. Once I have that plate in the right shape and size, I will then be making a frame with angle iron that will go from that plate across that way down that side of the door back up this side of the door to the bottom side of that uh, plate I'm again still not attaching it to the door at this point so then when it's at the right sort of shape it doesn't have to be exact I can take that frame off put it onto the hinges in the car Make sure that that's lining up properly in the car and then slip this door skin over that frame that I've made. When I'm happy with where it closes into the car, I'll tack it all the way around. Then I'll take it off the car and weld it up properly. There will be more structure going into the inside. You know, maybe a big uh, tube, steel tube going diagonally down to give it more strength and a bit of safety inside the car. But for now, let's get this plate cut and the frame made. Right, very slight alteration to the plan. I realised that priority is to get this square frame as flat as possible. Which is going to be pretty hard if I cut this plate first because it's all banana shaped. So what I'll do is I'll make the frame first to fit the outside dimension because the height of the frame here doesn't actually matter at this point as long as the frame is flat that way. And then I can cut this plate to shape. I'll probably use a cardboard to make a template to be honest because it's kind of awkward and obviously it, it curves around that way as well so square plate first
Oh, just it must be wasp season. Get out of my cork. Spit it out. Right, the frame size is actually pretty good. However, I do need to just get rid of all these little tabs. I'm not going to be using them anyway, so I might as well just cut all of them off. And there's a bit around the other side. This section here, which used to have, back in the day, it would have had a threaded rod going to that corner to basically tighten up the whole thing, but I'm not going to need that because the whole structure is going to be solid. So I just need to trim that off there. It's a wee bit fiddly because it's actually a sort of tab that's welded on on the inside so I'll chop that off, chop all these tabs off and then see if this frame slips in I actually want I want there to be a little bit of space between the edge of this and the edge of that because I still have to add the solid plate on the inside back in a sec right, let's see if we can squeeze this frame inside the door skin I wasn't wanting to bring this section all the way down to the edge because it's really rough. So, overall, pretty good fit. And I do have the gap at this side to add the, the thick plate, which this will attach to. Cool, so now I can make this level with, with the, the door jams as best as possible and then trim off whatever door jam is, you know, wavy and then we can start making the plate up. Now I know what you're thinking, I didn't do a rain dance, this just happens, it's a hot rod builder's curse. A lot of you know this, as soon as you're about to do something outside, the rain comes down, which it is. However, intermission, I've got a couple of things to show you. As some of you will know, I ordered wheel adapter spacers to convert my Chevy rear end, four and three quarters to Ford four and a half and I needed like a one and a half inch spacer. I ordered them from a company and I waited a month and then I called them, back order, back order, back order, two months, I gave up. So I cancelled that order, ordered from another company and they have arrived within a week. I really hope they fit. Let's have a look. I'm sure they'll look great but it's whether or not they, they fit well is the question. And we don't have to have the big discussion about Oh, don't use wheel spacers, we've been there, got the t-shirt, okay This is what's happening Which basically means I will be able to run the same The same offset wheels, the same lug pattern wheels all, all the way around So I could even carry a spare and I only need to carry one spare Because it doesn't have to be two different sizes So, so far they look the right thickness Mm. 
They were supposed to come with wheel studs. That's a problem. Let me contact them about that. Why can people just not get things right? Oh, wait a minute. I may be misjudged. I think they're actually inside. Well, that's some serious shrink wrap. Well, they've really... There we go. Yes, there's my studs. Hey, my nuts. Real nuts. Don't they look nice? So, uh, next time the... No, I'll finish the doors and then I'll try these. Well, I might try them just to make sure they actually fit the, the bolt pattern, but... Uh, I won't take it any further than that. Oh, it's even got it stamped. Feel adapter. Is that right? 5120, 5114. Hmm. We'll see. We shall see. Right. What else? Let me put this away. Right. The other thing. I told Andy that I would look at all these handbrake cables I got and see if there's any he can use. Obviously I've not chosen the ones for my car yet, so the decision will be pending on what I need. But let's, uh, let's have a look and see how long they are and see what fittings are on the end. See okay, how many I've actually got. I think they might actually be more than I first thought. Right, let's see. Okay, so not quite the variation I thought. There's basically two sizes. I've got six long ones and two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen small ones. Well, twenty-four cables. I was had twice as much as I thought. But uh, basically, each two is a set, isn't it? So one, two, three sets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sets. So. 12 sets. Huh, I'm sort of right. Right, let me give you a closer look. I will measure them and show you what each end looks like, okay? Right, we'll start with the small one. Okay. Small one has a sort of long square end on one side and the other side is kind of a short but fat square end quite a difference there so that could be important depending what it's you know hooking on to lengthwise the main part itself from where it hooks into whatever <laughs> let's go from that point the, the part that won't move basically right 28 inches okay you got it 28 inches the cable itself, from very end to very end, it's about 38 and a half inches, Andy. Okay, so that's the short one. What did I say? Oh my goodness. Inside, 28 inches, 28 and 38 and a half. Okay, 28, 38 and a half, small one. I should write this down. Big one. Big one's quite different, okay. You got a ball end on that side and I think it's the same on the other side. Yeah. Exactly the same, both sides. Ball end and that kind of fitting as opposed to the push clip fitting. They're both the same end so they would require... No, actually that's quite different. But they both require a, 
a bracket to go into and then that sort of horseshoe shaped hook, uh, clip that goes over, same with that one. S although that one is quite different. Gotcha. Lengthwise, from this, from this section here to the same in the, the other end, 54 inches, right? 54 inches internal and ball to ball. 62, 62 for the overall length of the, the moving cable. So 54 inside, 62 outside cable. Gotcha? Right. Let me know if they'll be any use to you, Andy. It's still raining. Big honk. Wow, that's one angry truck driver on the highway. Jeez. Okay, uh, I'd I, I just like to point out that if I had installed the glass like I wanted to, I wouldn't have this problem with the rain. But you guys know better. What do I know? This is my smarmy face. <laughs> I would really love to continue doing what I was doing because I was actually getting into the, the, the whole door thing. As you can see, I just don't have working room while the car is in here. So we need to wait and see if the rain goes off. I don't think it will be today, but I'm going to check the weather forecast and be back in a shot. <sighs> okay folks, sorry, but uh, the rain's not going off anytime soon. I can actually hear thunder. I think I can see lightning. It's very, very frightening. <laughs> okay, I do have my template made though, so... When this rain goes away, uh, I'll get back out here and cut that end plate, line it up with the hinges, mark the hinge holes, the hinge holes, the screw holes for the hinges, drill them, and then get this thing on the car, you know? It's starting to annoy even me. But as you can see, more distractions arrived today. Right. Uh, that's it. Oh, is it? Oh, it's Thursday, so. It's nearly the weekend, which means nothing to me because I'm just out here having fun anyway, every day. What a life. It's such a hardship. Okay, uh, thanks for tuning in. I know it was nonsense, but we're almost there and at least I've started in the doors. Okay, hit the subscribe if you think I'm worthy, which today I definitely wasn't, but you know, it helps me. And uh, see you in the next one. Take care everyone. Bye-bye.